All right, well, we are back at it again in the garage working on the trailer. So, uh, let me bring you up to speed with what we're doing. What we have done here uh, a couple updates since the last video. We did get the um, lid all installed, like you saw, with the latches on the gates. Um, that was complete. Got this secured down. Um, a little more about that here in just a second. Um, and then also over here we have the new jack. So um, if you remember, the old one was pretty similar to this one. This one now comes with a uh, grease cert, so that should be good. Um, and also um, is better positioned for the uh, the tongue gate itself. So um, it was a little high on the last one. This thing was actually flipped around and installed backwards, but um, this gives us a little more clearance. So when I drop this down, it nestles inside the uh, the opening here and will sit flat. Um, also installed the bump stop. I uh, flirted with the idea of putting some um, chains or a tailgate uh, cable on these, these uh, sides here, but uh, just the uh, kind of I felt like it was gonna get in the way. I mean you already have this uh, tongue right here that you have to kind of deal with and then having another cable that's gonna be in the way you really are de dealing with a pretty narrow um, approach angle so to speak for the the tailgate and putting crap inside there. So I just put a simple bump stop here so this thing drops down and we'll sit uh, on here nice nice and flush. I did have to grind it down a little bit. It sat a little bit higher. It was a four inch uh, piece and just grind it down just enough to clear that. One of the other cool things or neat things I uh, kind of coincidentally happened is when I pull this uh, jack and swivel, it'll swivel at this point and I'm gonna install another uh, bump stop I think over here to where it's already pretty close um, and I could probably do it against the metal but I think uh, um, we'd have issues, but what I'm talking about is it's another bump stop to where I can crank this and in its um, stowed position to where it applies pressure on there and then you don't have any kind of rattling of the uh, the jack itself down the road when you're when you're cruising. So um, that should be nice. And uh, what we're doing today. So that's kind of brings you up to speed with what I've done thus far. Oh, everything I've done thus far, a very huge thing. I've now done. Um, it took a lot of finagling and figuring out, but we have a license plate. And right there, that means I'm good to go forever. Um, so why, uh, why that's a big deal? Um, I went through a bunch of trouble looking into the Arizona um, regulations. And if it's a travel trailer, camper style um, trailer, it has to be registered uh, annually, so meaning I would have to get a um, you know 2019 plate, 2020 plate, whatever it is, and continue to pay that registration fee. Now, if it's a utility trailer, um, it is just uh, permanently registered, and I can never have to worry about it again, which is what I did. So I kind of had to take it down and get it inspected at a point where it's still kind of a utility trailer um, to get that designation. It was a pain in the butt. Let me tell you what, I went to get it. It's a homemade trailer, um, um, as it's designate, designated anyway. Uh, I went to a third party vendor to um, get it registered and get everything inspected as homemade. They told me it wasn't homemade, um, that I had to go to the DMV. I called a few other third party guys and they told me the same thing. I went down to the DMV and within two seconds they said, no, this is homemade and it, Di how it differentiates it goes from a level one to a level two inspection and since it is just a homemade trailer it goes back to a level one inspection uh, I only had to pay five bucks but it took me half a day at the DMV to get it all sorted out so that was a pain in the butt and but a huge hurdle finally stepped over and now we are ready to make the rest of the progress um, I've been kind of holding off on a lot of it really for that reason so now, next step, a lot of talking on this uh, intro here, but uh, hopefully you're still with me here. Next step, what we're doing today is the rack system. So I am installing a rack on top here that will uh, house 
or store the rooftop trailer, but also act as a platform for uh, hunting applications. So <clears throat> what we need to do, um, I was trying to figure out a good height. Um, if it was just solely a camp trailer, it would likely be much lower. Um, but having it this high, this is gonna be the bottom of the piece. The metal shop didn't have, I'm getting one and a half by four inch um, tube. It's gonna span the length of this thing. Didn't have it in stock, it'll be here in a couple days, but I was able to pick this up so I can get going on this portion of it. So what are we doing? I have a uh, 3 16th inch plate here that I'm gonna weld off to the base. This is actually, if you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see here, um, but it's about a uh, 14 gauge or so, I'd say, um, sheet metal, which is pretty stout, but I wanted a little more assurance um, for these uh, these columns here that I'm gonna be welding to, um, to give me a little more structural stability there. Um, so I'm gonna have a plate. These are too long, I'll be cutting them probably in half. Um, and then one will go here for the corner. I have a shorter um, column that'll go at the midpoint here, four feet, it's eight feet from front to back. So at four feet, I'm gonna put an intermediate uh, support here column, and that should sit um, level with the top here, and then another one obviously in the, uh, the front. So we'll have three on each side. I did some calcs with a one. This is one and a half by two inch, so it's one and a half inch in the uh, horizontal plane, and well, they're both horizontal, but uh, <laughs> one and a half inch in the uh, left to right plane and two inch in the front to back plane. So I did some calcs figuring out the uh, amount of deflection and force that I could be applied to this. Um, we're dealing with about 24 inches of uh, um, length between its uh, final support here, here on where it's gonna be welded out to the uh, trailer and the top of the um, support. So you have a um, single kind of deflection, like a cantilevered uh, column or beam. So figuring out, going back to my, uh, my math days, I went through and figured out uh, exactly how much uh, deflection could be allowed. And I went through a number of different uh, columns, thicknesses of column, um, sizes and shapes. The one and a half inch is kind of, um, kind of has to stay because that's about as much space mounted to the end, flush with the bottom portion of the trailer, um, leveled up to the top, you have about one and a half inches of space through there. So I was kind of restricted in that 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 uh, um, plane, but I went with two inch, um, just to give me a little more structural stability on the front to back for breaking and whatnot. Calculated that the amount of metal I'm gonna be using on the top is gonna run about 200 pounds. Um, I had to do some heavier grade uh, steel up there to house at least three people up there. So I'm figuring at least a 600 pound uh, live load on top. With the metal weight, you're looking at 800 pounds. So 800 pounds um, back and forth. Uh, I figured at about 1500 pound lateral force and we're still only dealing with like point, 0.15 inches of uh, deflection on this material. This is eighth inch. 0.12 um, gauge, 11 gauge steel. So anybody who's still with me, it should be fine. <laughs> After all that, uh, it should be good um, as a support uh, structure to, to house everybody. The one by four um, was used. I was hoping to go one by three. One by four I had to do because of the span angle. We're looking at a four foot span with um, that kind of load up top, people walking and whatnot. Um, this was actually not the greatest span. The greatest span is going to be along the width. So the intermediate support gave me a four foot span. Here I'm dealing with over a five foot span and more likely I'm going to have to put some uh, bracing between here um, and the, uh, the, other, the other piece um, to kind of bridge that, that, that gap, that spacing. So right now we're dealing with over it's like a uh, 65 inch span. So if I can cut that down to um, what was it, 54, 50, 
two, something like that. Um, I have a much better, less deflection in the uh, material for a one by four. So anyway, a whole bunch of math and bullshit that probably you don't care about, but that's why I went with the material choices that I did. Um, yeah, so just today what we're gonna do is get these things welded out. Oh, another, another thing I had to deal with. So because this trailer is a wonky old beat up trailer used for hauling off uh, wood and cleaning up campfires from the US Forest Service, um, you can see down the way here that we have a gap and I, I didn't really care about it um, too much. Let me get it from the back side without the sun in there. Um, didn't really, it wasn't that, it was more of like an aesthetic uh, thing and I wasn't really too concerned about it, but now it's coming to play and the largest gap is really, or spacing is really right where I'm putting the support. So it's causing it to actually flex out or bow out and uh, we can't have that. So what I'm doing now, I'm gonna weld these things out. I'm likely gonna have to weld up a temporary, maybe just a piece of angle iron at this, uh, this point here, put the um, column in and then use some ratchet straps to kind of cinch the two together. Um, I will disconnect these and then um, suck the top frame to where it's a little more square, not so bowed out. Then I can weld everything together and hopefully we're, we'll be good to go. <laughs> a, little, a little more than just uh, throwing up some columns, I guess, but we're gonna get it figured out today. So stick with us, stay tuned and let's get her done. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm going in circles, going in circles I should get away from here There's a better place for me, better place for me Trying to play my symphony But there's so much noise around, so much noise around Constantly fighting for space I need to clear my mind Need to clear my mind I wanna be empty Be empty Be empty A spark of light on fire I'm high, I'm a butterfly A blooming flower But I am thirsty A drop of water And another drop of water Sunlight I'll soon Got a gun to my head
right so we have welded out our base plates um and again i just did this to really distribute the load if you had just this single column on this kind of thin gauge metal i don't know over time i think it would uh, kind of wear it away and flex it out um possibly so um got these plates welded out and what i really wanted to show you is kind of what i did here to uh, get this thing sucked in so as you remember this uh um, frame piece or the uh, bucket of the tub was actually bowed out and now you can see even looking into this uh hole here is about i don't know three eighths of an inch sucked in which is uh great how i did that is like I was explaining, I got this clamped off to a piece of angle iron. I got a piece of 3 16 uh, metal there as a spacer. And then um, the column there um, obviously acts as like a hinge with the uh, strap going across here. Cinched it down until we were at level on both sides, which we are. And uh, that solved that problem. However, I'm now gonna have to drill new holes. Um, figure out how i want to anchor that thing a little better so i'm gonna wait here we're gonna stop here um only because the metal uh is gonna be here a couple days for the frame and i want to get that welded out so that i am um, mating to that frame and not trying to mate the frame to these columns if that makes sense there's a little bit wider at these base base portions here than it, at these uh, top wheel wells and as a result this 3 16th of an inch may have to be um, less or so like this or more. It just, uh, I'm not sure. And rather than try and figure it out without that frame up there, I'm just gonna wait for it to get here, um, get my width based off of the center post here, and then everything else will suck into it. Um, yep, that's it. So with the power of YouTube magic, where there once was metal or where there once was no metal. All right, well, that was quick. Um, <coughs> Actually, I had a little camera snafu. Not sure what happened, but don't have any video of me putting together this. Yeah, so everything's spot welded. Uh, like I said, camera snafu. Not sure what happened there, but uh, it's together. So what I actually ended up doing is um, I mounted all the columns and made sure that they were um, plumb level on both sides tacked them up and then um, tacked up and mounted the, um, I don't know, what do you want to call these, the, the uh, left and right um, beams and then went through and mounted the four um, horizontal beams. So <clears throat> it's within about uh, three sixteenths of an inch or so front to back as far as out of square. Um, I'm okay with that. This whole thing, I, you know, like I said before, the more I started thinking about it, there's just it was causing me more headaches to try and square it up than it was to just tack it up and it for for it to be out three sixteenths of an inch out of square, which I'm totally fine with. You're not going to see it on this this span. It is uh, pretty much level to the extent I need it to be, um, and uh, just slightly out of square. I think this is. Uh, 70 and an eighth inside to inside and the front was uh, like 69 and 15 16 so um, <clears throat> enough for me so now what I have to do today is just weld it all out so not sure how much cool video that's gonna be but um, we're gonna solidify it and then I'm gonna stand up there and see just how much deflection is in this one by four so I got everything welded out um, it is looking good uh, I got the bottoms here. The one thing I'm a little concerned with are these points right here. <coughs> so I'm thinking that just having a single hinge point right here with just sheet metal kind of holding it might be too weak. I don't know. I have to, I'm not sure if I just let it go and find out rolling down the road. Um, I think what I'm going to do is take off this um, top and I have to anyway um, and then actually weld out the insides here um, at these points so I think that'll give me a little more uh, structural stability 
if it's at this point um, it's carrying that that load through the sheet metal on this top piece instead of just flexing out this bottom portion it's actually at that top which is carried through the entire um, trailer assembly body so that should be good um, it's pretty solid as is um, but I think uh, I think that'll just be one more step that's needed anyway other than that I'm going to weld out these caps these let end up caps I had some spare parts um, that I found that are gonna work perfect for that and uh, I think we'll we'll leave it there uh, appreciate you guys watching uh, stay tuned I still have to get the insides done um, I still have to cut a door in over here which is sitting in this pile of crap over here um, yeah and a bunch of other inside stuff but this was the main structural uh, structural items and I'm one step closer all right thanks for watching appreciate it See you next time.